remember that fuel and transport strike we had a few weeks ago? I do. Things got a bit insane. Queues outside petrol pumps were savage. Some pumps even shut down. And for a while there, it looked like we'd have to eat our loved ones to survive. So we started wondering, what would we do in a world without petrol? Or well, in a world with a lot less petrol. We scratched our heads, made a few calls, and here's what we came up with. First up, we have this, the Yo bike. It doesn't need any fuel. It runs on a 750 watt electricity motor. What does that mean in automotive terms? Well, it's a whisker over one horsepower. And if you're looking for something on four wheels, there's this, the Reva I. Unlike the one horsepower motor on the bike, this one's got a whopping 13 horsepower. God, I hope I can handle the speed. And then there's this, the Honda Civic Hybrid, India's first hybrid car. So the question is, if you're going to make one of these part of your daily commute, which one is your best bet? So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go from here to our workplace and along the way, find out if going green is the way to go. And so we set off, feeling very noble, very planet friendly and very, very slow. In fact, this music is way too fast. Ah, much more like it. Now the problem with the Reva, if you've seen it, is that it's not very sexy. I mean, it's cute in a grandmotherly sort of way, but it's not sexy. I wouldn't want to show up for a date in this car. And that's the problem I have with green cars. If I'm going to give up the convenience of petrol, if I'm going to give up the thrill of speed, I want a trade-off in return. But that just doesn't happen with so many green cars. I mean, these guys need to learn from Peter, who says, give up meat, be a vegetarian, and in exchange, here, look at this poster of a beautiful woman wearing nothing but a cabbage leaf. That's why there are more vegetarians than Reva owners. I wasn't exactly in love with my bike either. Lots of adverts of the Yo bikes are targeted towards women. I can see why. Push it to the most and it'll make 45 kilometers an hour. You can argue that it still does fair enough for the city commute. But I still have my reservations. Juhi, meanwhile, was having none of those problems in the hybrid. Now, the best thing about the hybrid is that it's a normal car. Just one that's been designed to be more responsible to the environment. Now, this might sound a bit technical, but stay with me here. Up front, you've got a 1.3 litre petrol engine. And in the back, you've got an electric motor. Now, while you're at standstill or cruising at really low speeds, the engine switches off and the electric motor does all the work. It wasn't quite that simple for me though. Now on a full charge, the Reva's batteries will do 80 kilometers. But the second they run out, you have to charge the car for eight hours to get them going again. I have the same problems as Rohan. This thing does only 80 kilometers on a full charge. By that logic, a trip from Pune to Bombay, well, that'll take about 24 hours. And yet, in spite of all those problems, there were certain advantages to our cars. Because of its size, I can squeeze through traffic easily. I can squeeze through any kind of gap I want. Also, a full charge takes just 9 units of electricity. At about 4 rupees a unit, that's 36 rupees for an 80 kilometer run. Since the battery isn't as large as the Reva's, I don't need the 9 kilowatt electricity to charge this. In fact, the maker claims for 50 bucks, I can ride 500 kilometers. I guess I've got to concede this round to them. It is a big car, this. So in traffic, I've just got to wait it out. Now while my Honda isn't as cheap as the other two, considering it's a petrol car and a Civic at that, it gives me as much as 14 kilometers to the liter, which is a good 40% more than the normal Civic, which to me is a pretty good deal. And so happy, or well, less unhappy at least with all our cars, we plowed on to work. The only thing left to worry about was the cost of going green. Now, when Honda first brought the hybrid in, it was priced at 21 lakh rupees, which is almost twice the price of the normal Civic. Of course, they struggled with sales, which is why they slashed the prices down to 14 lakhs, which is what the normal Civic is for. And naturally, it was sold out in days. Now, this top-end variant that I'm driving costs 4.2 lakh rupees. Now, for that price, you can get yourself a Hyundai i10 or a Suzuki A-Star. So, what you've got to ask yourself is, 
How much are you willing to pay for this green halo around your head? And this little bike costs 29,000 rupees. There really isn't much else you can get cheaper than this unless you want to bicycle and pedal to work every day. Alright, so there you have it. Three different green options in three different price ranges. Now they're all good in their own right, but are they good enough to be your primary car or even your only car? We would have to say no, but if the world suddenly ran out of petrol tomorrow, at least you would have an option.